two things. Number one, congratulations, Dan. You can tell everybody what happened. I know. Dan's a doctor. Dan has got his doctorate. Come over here. Collect your accolades. Dan got his, his PhD in psychology. Bend down those so they can see more than your nipples. He's a doctor, everybody. So he go can get my wood and look really silly. So so he can tell us exactly what's wrong with us. Yeah. In yeah. Medical terms. Yay. Yeah. He does sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> and not only that, when you, you went to St. Louis, was it St. Louis to get his doctorate? St. Louis. Yes. Which was graduation. And when you came back home last night, Miracle had a surprise for you, didn't she? She did. We found her about to hop up onto the couch, and I surprised her, so I got yelled at. And we picked her up, and she was covered in poop. I missed you, so now I have poop on. Yay! <laughs> and there was shit leaking out of one ear. And we had a friend who came in and took care of her every day, and she said... On Saturday, I cleaned out her ear. Her ear was kind of gross. And we're like, yeah, that's going to happen. But we came home and sometime in between when our friend came in to feed her and look after her. And when we came home at 1 a.m., she managed to cover herself in poop. And then peed on Tara. And peed on me while we were cleaning her up. <laughs> so. But she's very happy that we're home. Aren't you, baby? She's pretty much been glued to me ever since. So. She has a funny way of showing it, but she loves us. Yeah. She was like, look, I was just so depressed. I decided there was no point and I should just be as gross as possible because <laughs> nobody loves me and I've been abandoned here to die. So fuck it. I love I'm just you. Just so roll you. in my own poop. I love you. So now I'm wearing poop. Hey, hey. I can't tell if she's purring or grunting at you. It's like, you can go away now. You can go now, Dan. <laughs> you are dismissed, Dan. I say good day. And she's still just sitting here grumping. Like, oh, God damn it. I only got 14 hours sleep today, you asshole. I'm exhausted. Go back to sleep. Okay, kid, you go back to sleep. The internet doesn't like me talking about you too much anyway, especially where poop is concerned. We're going to get comments. Fuck I don't, I don't read them. Why do you? They're useless. Sometimes they're funny. Yeah, but Except that I'm an annoying feminazi who talks about my cat too much. So you don't do it to be funny. You go to the comments and you poke them with sticks. I don't poke them with sticks in the comments. I poke them with sticks on Twitter. Great. I don't get into comment sections. I'm not fucking crazy. Tara, don't provoke the Borg. Why? <laughs> anyway. It's fun. For you? Exactly. Is there someone else I should be considering? I know that one day I blew up your mentions and I apologize for that. I come back from my, I come back to Twitter <laughs> and it's like this, just this wall of back and forth. And that day some, it wasn't the Nazis. It was the angry Meninists. Some, some cockmonger that, that was yelling at you. And I'm like, the fuck happened while I was gone? I, I leave, I come back. There's 500 fucking mentions. I'm like, what the shit is this nonsense? Yeah. Sorry. I like to I like to keep you on your toes. I like to keep you wondering why you keep letting me do this job. <laughs> I'm too fat to be on my toes, Tara. I don't like to let a week go by when you don't have to seriously consider whether you should fucking fire me. <laughs> well, with that having been said, it's time for the nonsense. Do you want to do the nonsense? Each week. Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out worldwide, interwebs, find all sorts of horrible, horrible shit, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? And of course, we're, I'm just going to dive right into it this week because our first headline, there's, there's, 
I have no good this. <sighs> I, I I cannot sum this up briefly, so I'm just gonna let's just run with her. Yes, Grady, exactly. <laughs> Tweed head fire department uses angle grinder to free man's penis from ring spanner. That's a wrench. I don't even know what half those words are. This is from Australia. That sounded like Mad Libs. Uh, a man was left red faced when firefighters had to be called to the hospital to remove a tool from his penis. The man had become stuck after his penis swelled up in the ring spanner on Monday and he was unable to remove it. Tweed firefighters say it is not uncommon for them to be called to such jobs where people leave it too late to ask for help. That's sad that it's not uncommon. It's just like, you know, hey, guys, another guy stuck his dick in something. We have to go cut him out. Oh, okay. Got his tool stuck in a tool? <sighs> really? I, it's, okay, there's a there's a there's a thing that exists just for this purpose, guys. You ready? It's called a cock ring. It exists just for this purpose to restrict the blood flow, so you keep it hard as long as you want. But the thing about a tool, especially designed for that purpose, is it's made to come off. Well, like they're stretchy, or they have open and close hinges or something, and they're made to go on. And then come off. Wrenches, not so much. I don't think he was using it as a cock ring, Tara. He had his fucking dick through it. What do you think? Um, cock rings don't have handles. Yeah. I think he was using this for... Was... I don't think he was masturbating with it. Are you sure? It's cold metal. They make glass dildos, Tara. Yeah, I know, but that has some bullshit to do with heat conduction or something. There's a reason. And on our end, it's supposed to be hard. On yours, it's not. <laughs> Gentlemen, Every if you're fucking a chick and she feels like cold metal, you're fucking a cyborg and should run. How many, how many years have we been doing this and we have not? You cannot fathom at once that someone thinks this is a good time. I mean, I guess. I honestly think it's more likely he was using it as a cock ring. I really do. Well, that would be inconvenient for for his partner. Because as the fuck is going on, they're getting smacked. He doesn't always have to a use a cock ring for the partner. Maybe the problem is he wanted to masturbate, but he can't maintain an erection. So you can use cock rings alone. Why am I teaching sex ed on the show? <laughs> Just use the proper tools for the job, <laughs> is all I'm saying. Why well, do I know more about male devices than you do? That's a good question, and you should do some Googling. You should do some Googling and learn how to better double-click your mouse. Just for fun. You know, just because we have perfected the penis transplant does not mean you need to give them a reason. No. To give you a new dick. Maybe he thought they'd give him a bigger one. No. Or something. No. Oh, for fuck's sake. You don't but, need to give... Yeah, don't stick your dick in, in in household tools. If it's not designed... It's teaching you sex ed, something has gone horribly wrong. I don't appreciate that. I know my shit. Well, no, I think the point is the fact that someone on the internet that they don't know, just random person on the internet knows more about sex ed than the shit that the people who are paid to teach oh. sex ed. Okay. Something has, in fact, gone wrong. Okay. That I will accept. Something's gone wrong. Granny, what are you doing over there? Oh, okay. I say something to him, he goes, ow! I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> he, um, likes, he, answers, he answers me when I, I'm like, Granny's like, What? I love kitties that talk back to you. Oh, my yeah. sister, the cat my sister had before Bridget used to do that. Her name was Ashling, and you'd say, hi, how are you? Meow. Before, What'd you do today? Meow. Before we get too much further on it, I, I wanted to mention this. Um, 
this is kind of a what the fuck for my cat, which is a little bit psycho. Uh, this is a plastic ice cube. Lots of people were asking me, what, what's a plastic ice cube? This is a plastic ice cube. It's made yeah, so... It's full of stuff so they don't melt. Right. So you so they don't water down your drink. You keep the drink cold without watering it down. Um, what you do is you put them in your drink, you drink, you drink, and when it's done, you wash them in the dishwasher or, you know what, and I wash them and I set them on the counter to dry and I come back and they're gone. <clears throat> And I start finding them around the house, hidden in places like behind the green screen. How many? And in my clothes. I think there's 10 missing. Oh, no. <laughs> and I'm wondering why Grady likes these so much. And I found one. And if you'll notice very closely, you have to look look here. It's... You got to hold it up a little higher. It's not in camera range. There you go. It's, oh, it's bleeding. Yeah, that's why Grady likes them. Because he's biting into them. He wants a toy that bleeds. It feels like real murder. My cat, everybody. <laughs> anyway, a little segue on that. Um, so let's go on to just complete. Th this is all. This is from New Zealand. Okay, have you've we you've all owned a car. We've all had car problems. Yes. And have you ever done, and I've done this, I shouldn't do this, have you ever recognized your car as a problem, but instead of taking it to the mechanic, you just keep driving it a little longer saying, I'll go next week. I'll go yeah. next payday. Yeah, um, yeah. This is that cranked up to 11. Car driven with vice grips crashes in Taranga, a car being driven with vice grips for a steering wheel. Oh my God. Has smashed into another vehicle. Oh, look at the picture. Yeah. See, that's a good alternative use for a wrench. Well, no, Tara, it's not because it didn't actually work. I mean, if you could make it work. Wade Hunter of Taranga said the driver was allegedly using the grips to steer the vehicle at the time of the crash. How, how does your fucking steering wheel fall off? <laughs> what do you have to do to get your steering wheel to fall off? That's hard. <laughs> I... That's not an engine part that just blows one day. <laughs> Zombie Panda is like, like a good neighbor, State Farm is not coming. They are not coming. They they are not returning your calls. That jingle's bullshit anyway, because Dan worked for them when he lived in Atlanta, and I sang it all the fucking time, and he never showed up. It is... It if your car does not have a steering wheel, I mean, even back the earliest days of the motor car, one of the most important aspects one of, that was required was a steering device. It wasn't always a wheel. I guess you can remove them because in Fury Road, they all have their own steering wheel that they click into the car. Well, I think those are kind of whatever. custom. Hmm. That, that's not how it normally works. If your car does not have a steering wheel. It's not drivable. No, it's not. It's not one of those. It's not one of those. Well, I'll just handle. That'll be fine. It's not designed for that. No, it's, it's not a joystick. It's, it's this is like, like ten, hands at 10 and... 10. Yeah, hands at, hands at 10. That's, that's We had it. a rental car this weekend oh. that the gear shift was a dial. Yeah, it was on the middle console and the gear shift was a dial. Like it looked like I couldn't drive this car because I would try to turn up the radio and throw the fucking car in reverse. Because <laughs> it's on the same console as all the radio shit and all the heating shit. So you could easily reach over and think you're turning up the heat and fucking change gears. Like, 
It was really weird. We've been, yes, it was a Chrysler. They've been reinventing the wheel with that shit lately, and they really need to not. Because they've had generations of people learning to drive one way, and then you change that shit. People I mean, are, I guess it's prettier, and you don't have the stick, which always gets dirty and dusty and whatever, but... I feel like it's too much like things you take for granted that you can turn while moving and not kill somebody. Yeah. I mean, no. I, the radio in the car a lot. I know there are cars. Yeah, Dan went to try and shift from reverse to drive and instead turned on the air conditioner. <laughs> that is a quick way to make your transmission just fall the fuck out. Yes. It's not going to like that. But in this case, some parts of your car are essential. You can yeah. get by without a radio. You can get by without AC. You can even get by without, you know, the windows being able to roll them up and down. You cannot get by it's, without a steering wheel. I have done without all of those things at one time or another. Yeah. Exactly. Steering wheel, kind of important. Kind, kind of a have you ever had the power steering go on a power steering car? Yes. Yes, I have. It's, it's suddenly like, ah! Yeah. Do you need fucking Thor to drive your car for you? Yeah. I'm like, how did people used to do this? Oh, God! That was, that was, that was like, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm a weakling. All right. A little red ball just rolled into frame. Grady's playing with his ball. What are you doing? Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. One gets a ball. No, he's decided he's going to destroy his litter mat. Oh, well, okay. Probably going to come in. Hello, Green. There he goes. There he's going for the ball now. Kick that ball. Show that ball who's boss. Oh, yeah. He just ran into the wall. Oh, yeah. Go get it. I've noticed that, that Grady is adapting to, um, Leno to, to hardwood. <laughs> he now will kind of scuttle. Mm -hmm. He will walk sideways. Which yeah, because is... the slide, like Miracle just did it. She jumped off the tower and then like Tokyo drifted into the wall. Hey, Goofa, stop it. And the problem is she's a little old lady. So I'm like, please don't jump off of high things. You're going to break a hip. Grady's <laughs> <Damn. laughs> playing with his D20. Anyway. <laughs> graceful hunter everyone i really enjoyed you learning all the wonders of having a cat it like just little, fell over again. Your, your little tweets that are like things that are totally new to you that anybody who's had a cat has always known it's been really delightful to watch you explore the wonders of i won't say cat ownership because really you're owned by a cat but it's yeah. it's been fun that learning curve are we done yet? Or are you going to be... This is the rest of the show for you now. This is it, bitches. Anyway. Um, so let's let's go to uh, two great tastes that do not go together. Lots of fast food places have been trying to come up with new ways to compete because their revenues have been slowly sliding. A Burger King in... Uh, where was this? Uh, in Finland has a novel concept which I, I i do not want to see in practice oh god oh god no oh god my eyes the goggles they do nothing burger king has opened a spa in one of its restaurants those of you who always wanted to eat a whopper in a sauna At least that seems to be the logic behind one of burger king's latest moves metro reports the fast food behemoth has recently opened a spa at one of its restaurants in Finland. The spa is located on the ground floor of Burger King in Helsinki. It includes a 15-person sauna, which according to the website, is perfect for, quote, social gathering or work. At the Burger King? Another sauna fits 10 guests and equipped with a 48-inch television screen. Rooms are decorated in Burger King fashion, with red and blue benches, towels adorned with a familiar logo, and, quote, home of the Whopper plastered on the wall. What? Do you really want to get a spa treatment with a big old Burger King logo on the wall? I mean... 
Do you? Okay, so uh, my first image in my mind is of people dressed in only towels, sitting around in a sauna, eating Whoppers. I don't understand. I mean, I, I just don't understand this combination in business. What is, I don't, when I think of Burger King, I think of, you know, oh, I'm hungry and I have four bucks in my pocket. Okay, I'll go to Burger King. Right. I, I don't think of. Not, I need a seaweed wrap and. Yeah, I, I don't think, I want to go have a nice spritz. Like Spitz, Spitz, that's what it's called, Spitz. Yeah. I don't, I don't. Did you anything. hear Kalashnikov is going to start a men's clothing line in Russia? Yeah, the gun maker. They've decided to branch out, and they're going to do a men's clothing line. Lovely. Why? why? It just it doesn't. I. I just can't imagine just. Oh my God, are all the spa treatments performed by people in the Burger King costume? Because that might be worth it. That would be the least relaxing thing ever. That thing is fucking creepy. Like I don't want a massage from that dude. <laughs> I'm Grady in the background upstage in my ass. Yeah. I'm trying to be funny. <laughs> what are you doing? Well, I'm better at it. Oh, the subservient chicken. Yes. Could you get like, I'm not going to say a facial from the subservient chicken. <laughs> that, it, exactly. <laughs> No, no. All right. My cousin's pointing out that Harley Davidson does clothes too, but I guess they're kind of a lifestyle brand now. I don't know well, that I think of Kalashnikov as a lifestyle brand. In America, I don't really want sure to. Fuck is. I mean, I guess in America they are. Yeah, America. Yeah. So servient chicken doing spa treatments. All right, I'm in. Uh, you got me a subservient chicken. I love that motherfucker. So, next one up. This is from your neck of the woods. This is from South Brunswick, New Jersey. Uh, it's really close to me. Yeah. Um, we've all had that ex who've done us wrong. And it sucks. But you just kind of got to deal with it. There are certain things you don't do. You don't go to their house. You don't slash their tires and you don't cause $10,000 worth of damage to any vehicles you find there. But you know what you really don't do? You don't do it when you're not sure about their address. Oh no. Man accused of seeking revenge causes $10,000 in damage at the wrong house. This is what happens when you fuck a stranger in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, picturing it? You're picturing it. <laughs> what the fuck you do to my car, man? What this is what happens, Larry. I kill your fucking car, man. South Brunswick man, who police say it sought revenge against the man dating his ex-girlfriend, went to the wrong house, caused ten thousand dollars in damages to vehicles in the driveway. Ajinka Kelker, twenty of South Brunswick, believed that a vehicle in the driveway of a home in Friendship Road quote belonged to a person who was dating his former girlfriend. Now that's that's even another thing. Former, that's your ex. There. Friendship Road. That's ironic. Yeah, friendship road, yeah. But yeah, one, she's your ex. It's none of your fucking business who she dates anymore. Sorry to say. At 1.15 a.m., <laughs> a family member of the home, quote, heard a hissing air noise outside. Family member went outside and saw slashed tires on a Ford pickup. Parents woke up and the mo mother saw her Suburban had its tires slashed. The family then, quote, saw that their Jeep Wrangler had obscenities scratched its door and fender, as well as tires slashed its roof stabbed. Police say friends who've been sleeping over also had the tires on the vehicle slashed. 
the fourth and fifth vehicle's damage were a Dodge and Chevy pickup. This is a lot of work this guy put in. So even if he was at the right address, he didn't know which car to fuck up. So he just fucked, fucked up, up everything. Things. Yeah. He wasn't sure. So it's just like, well. Bro, just stalk her on Facebook. Yeah, it's, it's cheaper. Um, please went to home. This is what home surveillance footage allegedly so Kelker walking around the property with a knife and committing the damage. Officers went to Kelker's home and took him into custody. They also seized the rental pickup truck he allegedly used during the crime. They'll she'll never know it was me. <laughs> it's not my car. If I'm driving a rental. They don't track who rents cars or anything. And just just. To, to, to round it out, he was also charged with being an unlicensed driver. Oh, good. So he's just, he, it's a stack. A, a stacking them up there. It's like a parfait of stupid. Yes. Stupid parfait. Or a trifle. A trifle. A stupid trifle. Oh, Jersey. I just, you know what? If you if you find yourself in, in the middle of the night at a stranger's home, carving up what could the, potentially be your third vehicle with two more to go, think about your life. That that's kind of one of those stop and take a moment. Yeah. Take a also, once your ex is your ex. None of your fucking business what they do. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's just not. And even if it's not your ex and you find out your significant other is cheating on you, one, I never understand why people go after the other person. Be mad at your significant other. They're the one cheating on you. Like, women always go after the other woman. Yeah, no, no. Go after the dude. Be pissed at your piece of shit boyfriend, actually. Yeah. Two... I mean, I don't have stats on this, but I feel like I can say with confidence that fucking up somebody's car has never saved a relationship. Not unless they're an incredibly dysfunctional pair to begin with. Yeah. Because I can see some some trailer park moments. <laughs> oh, he loved me so much. He fucked up that other guy's car. I, I can see that. I can kind of see that. What is that cat doing? He's he's pooping. That's what are you feeding him? Is he no. pooping bullets? He aggressively digs. He, okay. That's his favorite thing to do. Like he's going to the like he's trying to find his way to China. This cat. He, Miracle has taken to not bothering to bury her poop, which they tell me is a sign of aggression. <laughs> Oh my god, you have to see this right now. Look at her. I I don't pass the fuck out. And now you're gonna wake her up. I'm tired. Are you gonna what? wake her up? No, oh, you're not gonna wake her up this time. No, she's so happy. I don't know if unconscious is the same thing as happy. No, she's most happy when she's sleeping. <sighs> it's her favorite way to be. And she'll just fucking face plant on things and fall asleep, like right now. Like, she'll just fucking... Fuck it. Done. Like, face down on the stairs, just sleeping. Fuck it. Done. Oh, her little whiskers are twitching. We're having a dream. Will you do it again if I pull the camera on you? <laughs> Extreme close-up. Oh. Oh, hi. Fuck I didn't that. off. Wait, what, what, what's going on? That is the death face. Look at that. That is fuck off. Oh, oh baby. I'm okay. Just asleep. I'm going back to sleep. Get that camera out of my face. Oh, what? Not you too. I got a show to do, buddy. <laughs> so, um, one of the, the more, I, I think, Important developments of modern society was the advent of 911. It, it was 
it, it has become crucial to modern living to be able to summon emergency services with a quick few presses of buttons, boom, boom, boom. It's made life so much better. So, as you may know from previous broadcasts and tonight, we are doing our damnedest to destroy it. <laughs> Woman reported robbery to avoid playing go paying Gold Star Chili Bill. What? Mount Healthy, Ohio. A Gold Star Chili customer is accused of calling 911 and reporting an armed robbery to avoid paying her $20.30 bill. You know what's more expensive than whatever the fuck Gold Star Chili is? A $30,000 bond? Mm, yes, for instance. Bond was set at $30,000 after Den Destiny Janie Watson. Oh, with that name, she was, she was going to have trouble in life. Never, don't name your child Destiny. Don't do it. Don't, don't, don't but, do it. You no, know, but we never would have had Destiny's child. We would have no Beyonce. Even though her mom's name is Tina. Yeah, exactly. Don't, you, you, the, the likelihood your child is going to become Beyonce. The likelihood they're going to fucking call 911 to get out, to get out of a paying a $20 bill. She... Uh, she was arrested Wednesday night on charges of disrupting public service, making false alarms, and theft. Fourteen officers from three law enforcement agencies reported to the Hamilton yeah, Avenue they restaurant. They fucking bring out SWAT for that level shit. When Watson allegedly called 911 to report a robber with a gun was inside the business just after 10.30 p.m. Fourteen officers some of whom may have been needed at actual actual crimes threatening emergencies were delayed or waylaid by you trying the most stupid diamond ditch i have ever fucking heard yeah to try and get free chili i'm assuming they sell chili with that name twenty dollar a twenty dollar bill like, we've all gone somewhere and realized we don't have cash on us. We've all done it. Yeah. Like, this is not the answer. I don't really necessarily know what the answer is. Like, you figure something out. If you've already eaten, you fucking call somebody. I would call a friend. I'd be like, yo, dude, can you spot me? I, I left my wallet at home. So, she, you know, and you pay your friend back and everybody's happy. You do not, however... Call and, the fuck cops and, and report a fake robbery. Here's the most extreme idea that would come to mind. What I would do is say, okay, I don't have the money. Here's my driver's license. I'm going to take a cab. I'm going to go back to my place, get the money, bring it back to you, pay the cab driver, pay you, because that's my responsibility, because I done fucked up. That's the most, that's the first, that's the, that's the plan that springs to mind for me. That just, boom, out of the blue, that's the first plan that comes to mind. It's like, okay, it's going to cost me more, but being an adult sucks sometimes. You have to be responsible. My first idea is that I have a scheme in mind. And then, apparently, she let them ser search her purse, which contained the phone, which contained the outgoing call to 911. They can find out who did that shit. Especially if you're like, yeah, no, you can go through my bag. They, they, and even if they hadn't, they could simply say, call the cell phone provider and go, yeah, whose number is this? Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Oh. What the fuck is Gold Star Chili? I don't know. It's it's Ohio. They pro it, it, We have people in Ohio. What the fuck is Gold Star Chili? Being it that it's the Midwest, they probably put noodles in their chili. Is that a Midwestern thing? Have you heard of that? Ohio. What is it? It's chili made with chocolate. Wait, what? Yeah. Chili made with chocolate. Don't make that for me. Yeah. Just give me the chocolate and you can have the chili. 
chili made with Oh. I mean, I've heard of chocolate oh. with chili in it. Not chili with chocolate in it. No. Ugh. Is that like mole oh. sauce? No. Oh. oh. And finally this week, you know, it's become a sign of our times when I'll put this out there to you and see what the first thing that comes to mind when you hear this phrase is. <laughs> Internet startup. What's the first thing you think of? That really annoying HBO show. I know, but it is. My, the first thing I think of when I hear Internet startup is elaborate promotional ideas. That are no, they're normally bad. This Flash mobs and the like. This kind of raised the bar on those forever. Terror in cans. A-list guests flee as mask men wearing suicide vests in sick stunt. Guests staying at an exclusive hotel for the Cannes Film Festival fled in panic as a commando of masked men wearing fake suicide vests staged a sick PR stunt. I love that this article used commando correctly. Commando refu refers to a unit, not an individual. So that's, that's cool. The bad taste prank, which took place yesterday at the six month anniversary uh, of the Paris attacks. Wow. On the six month anniversary of the Paris attacks, they pulled this shit. Spread terror among Hollywood A-listers as a boat with a black flag carrying six men approached the French Riviera. Many guests feared the stunt was a terrorist attack after mistaking the black flag for one used by the Islamic State. <sighs> terror the terrifying ordeal turned out to be a sick joke carried out by a French internet startup company. Why? Look at that shit there. The stone was pulled by Araxi.com, a luxury high-end website aimed at the world's richest celebs during Cannes Film Festival. So what I think of when I think of high-end luxury goods is fucking ISIS. Whose idea was this? On the six-month anniversary of the Paris terror attacks. It's so bad, Tara froze up. We lost Tara. It's that horrible. Look at this. On the sixth anniversary of the Paris terror attacks, they pulled this shit. I, I also just don't get how this seemed like a good idea to begin with. Like, Hey, guys, we're doing a luxury high-end website. I know the perfect thing to do. What? Let's find a bunch of high-end... Rich celebrities, yeah, and yeah, let's scare the shit out of them. Yeah, let's fake a terrorist attack. Nothing says high end luxury goods like faking a terrorist attack. I mean, I mean, I guess everybody knows your website's name now. Yeah, but they also know that it's run by assholes. Who does this? And this is also another thing. Didn't anyone who was doing this stop to think for maybe one second? They could get shot for this. Yeah. You're that. It's not a happy time in Europe right now. And they're kind of, after Brussels, after uh, France, after all this, they're kind of on high alert for potential terrorist shit. They're a little touchy, especially at a huge event. Filled with celebrities and stuff. Yeah, exactly, buddy. Exactly. This could definitely have ended up being a shoot first, ask questions later, because we've already had a couple of shit things blow up. Yeah. We're not going to let that happen again. Did none mm -hmm. of these people and in, and in, in, who were setting this up go, hold, hang on, hold on, I don't want to die. Yeah, hey, this might be a really fucking terrible idea. But no, terrorism is not 
a good advertising strategy. It's not. Because here's the thing, like, even if you weren't intending to hurt anybody, technically you did commit an act of terror because you did something with the intent of terrifying people. They don't fuck around with that shit anymore, man. Like, coming back from the, from St. Louis yesterday, the whole fucking airport got evacuated. You know why? Some asshole didn't feel like standing in line, tried to go in through the exit to the terminal. Evacuated the whole goddamn airport. Everybody had to go through security again. They do not fuck around with this shit. No. They don't play. And we haven't been had a bombing in, what, 10 years or so? A little over yeah. that? Over a decade? They just had one in France, so they're a little bit more on edge. Yeah. You dumb shits. Uh, don't do that. So, yeah, the first thing we learned this week is just don't. Don't. If Whatever hip, edgy, out there idea you have to promote your brand, think it through. Get like an airplane with one of those banners that drags behind it. Yeah. Take your little speedboat and make a big banner for your startup and drag that around and just boat around with it instead of putting an ISIS flag on that boat. We've learned that 911 is never to be a component of your brilliant ploy. Your cunning ruse. It's always fucking food service. It's always. Too. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Everybody calls 911 because they're out of chicken nuggets or I don't want to pay for my chili. Like, fast food is not an emergency. <sighs> Every We've learned that when they're gone, they're gone. Let it go. Don't start fucking up cars and especially don't fuck up the wrong cars yeah if you're gonna be that creepy psychotic ex at least be accurate <laughs> we've learned that whoppers and steam bath not too great taste that go great together i mean i guess i mean if you eat way too much of that shit, you're going to get sweaty anyway. Wouldn't you get a soggy Whopper, though? I don't think you're supposed to eat the Burger King in the sauna. You're not supposed to. But that's probably what's going to end up fucking happening. I mean, you already have the subservient chicken. Just start a fucked up brothel. <laughs> now, I kind of want to see Burger King subservient chicken porn. No, Terry. Why? Why are you? Come on, you kind of want to see it. No, I don't. I really don't. Why do people do that? Why a little? Do... Bit. A little why... bit you do. Why do people always say, "Come on, you really want to see that?" No, I don't. I really. It already exists. Now I'm gonna have to look for it. I don't need the train wrecks. I don't. <laughs> We've learned there are some things you can drive with your car, disabled in your car, that's fine. There are some things, like the steering wheel, You, sh it's that time to tow that shit to a mechanic. Yeah. That's not a, that, that is not a, I'll let it go to next payday. That's, get that shit fast. Yeah, that's kind of important. And finally, we've learned there are sex toys designed <laughs> For the for use with your junk. Specific, Use the proper tool for the job. Which is not a wrench. No. Dick wrench. Cause you know what I'm A wrench is almost never the right tool for a sex job. I'm thinking of that guy from knife wrench on scrubs. Knife wrench. It's dick wrench. Oh god! Oh god, no! No, this was a bad plan. There are very few scenarios with regard to sex where the wrench is the right way to go. I mean, I'm sure there are a few, but there's not a lot. Yeah, I love how we have to add qualifiers all the time. 
We can never say with absolute because because I'll get sixty two tweets that'll be like, actually, if you get locked in your fetish handcuffs, the wrench is really handy. Her her. I I know. Well, actually, is don't going, stick your dick in a wrench. Well, actually, is going to be the death of modern society. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's it's all I'm thinking of is right now. Speaking um, of which, I have a new Game of Thrones theory. I think George R. R. Martin has been running like a long troll on all the angry male nerds in the world. And this is actually a very long story about women rising up and crushing the fucking men. At least the TV series is. Yeah, we don't like, know. no, no, yeah, read about my elaborate world with big manly men and battles and women getting raped and shit. Oh, wait, hard left, left turn. Bitches are going to kill everybody. I await your letters. We just, yeah, all I'm thinking of is, is right now is Watchmen is to be like, all the whores and politicians will look up and say, save me. And I'll look down and say, well, actually. 